Folks, the people of this nation have spoken. They've delivered us a clear victory, a convincing victory, a victory for we, the people. We've won with the most votes ever cast on presidential ticket in the history of the nation, 74 million. What I must admit has surprised me tonight we're seeing all over this nation, all cities and all parts of the country, indeed across the world, an outpouring of joy, of hope, renewed faith in tomorrow. I pledge to be a president who seeks not to divide, but unify, who, who doesn't see red states and blue states, only sees the United States. I sought this office to restore the soul of America, to rebuild the backbone of this nation, the middle class, and to make America respected around the world again. To all those of you who volunteered and worked the polls in the middle of this pandemic, local elected officials, you deserve a special thanks from the entire nation. I'm proud of the coalition we put together, the broadest and most diverse coalition in history, Democrats, Republicans, independents, progressives, moderates, conservatives, young, old, urban, suburban, rural, gay, straight, transgender, white, Latino, Asian, Native American. And especially for those moments where this campaign was at its lowest ebb, the African-American community stood up again for me. You've always had my back, and I'll have yours. I said at the outset, I wanted to represent this campaign to represent and look like America. We've done that. Now that's what I want the administration to look like and act like. For all those of you who voted for President Trump, I understand the disappointment tonight. I've lost a couple times myself. But now, let's give each other a chance. It's time to put away the harsh rhetoric, lower the temperature, see each other again, listen to each other again. And to make progress, we have to stop treating our opponents as our enemies. They are not our enemies. They are Americans. Americans have called upon us to marshal the forces of decency, the forces of fairness, to marshal the forces of science, and the forces of hope in the great battles of our time, the battle to control the virus, the battle to build prosperity, the battle to secure your family's health care, the battle to achieve racial justice and root out systemic racism in this country, and the battle to save our planet by getting climate under control, the battle to restore decency, defend democracy, and give everybody in this country a fair shot. That's all they're asking for, a fair shot. Our work begins with getting COVID under control. We cannot repair the economy, restore our vitality, or relish life's most precious moments, hugging our grandchildren, our children, our birthdays, weddings, graduations, all the moments that matter most to us until we get it under control. On Monday, I will name a group of leading scientists and experts as transition advisors to help take the Biden-Harris COVID plan and convert it into an action blueprint that will start on January the 20th, 2021. That plan will be built on bedrock science. It will be constructed out of compassion, empathy, and concern. Folks, I'm a proud Democrat, but I will govern as an American president I'll work as hard for those who didn't vote for me as those who did. Let this grim era of demonization in America begin to end here and now. I've long talked about the battle for the soul of America. We must restore the soul of America. Our nation is shaped by the constant battle between our better angels and our darkest impulses. 
And what presidents say in this battle matters. It's time for our better angels to prevail. Tonight, the whole world is watching America do with full hearts and steady hands, with faith in America and in each other, with love of country, a thirst for justice. Let us be the nation that we know we can be, a nation united, a nation strengthened, a nation healed, the United States of America. And ladies and gentlemen, there's never, never been anything we've tried we've not been able to do. So remember, as my grandpa, our grandpa used to say when I walked out of his home when I was a kid up in Scranton, he said, Joey, keep the faith. And our grandmother, when she was alive, she yelled, no, Joey, spread it. Spread the faith. God love you all. May God bless America, and may God protect our troops.